In this tutorial, we will look at how to create Python strings. You can create a Python string using three different types of quotes. You can use single quotes, double quotes, or triple quotes using both single or double quotes. Kind of confusing, so let's take a look at some examples. Here is the first example. Here we created a string using just, just single quotes. It isn't assigned to anything, so it just immediately prints back out from within idle. You can do the same thing with double quotes. The cool thing about this is that you can actually intermingle uh, quotes within the quotes. So if you have conjunctions like don't or isn't, you can wrap them in double quotes and you don't have to escape them. Let's take a look at one of those examples so you know what I'm talking about. Now, if you had written this uh, using just single quotes, this particular part would have not have worked and you probably would have received a syntax error. Actually, let's try that and find out what happens. Let's replace these just like that. And you'll see you have an invalid syntax because the string starts here and ends at D-O-N. So the T is not within the quotes anymore and it is not assigned to anything. So it's a syntax error. To create multi-line strings, you can use triple quotes. You can use either three single quotes or three double quotes to create a multi-line string. In this case, I use three, um, three double quotes. You'll note that it has that when it printed out, it didn't print the line endings. It all printed in one line, but it has the line endings right here. That's what the backslash n is. So if you actually take this code and tell it to print it, it'll print it correctly. Let's try that too. If we print it, you'll actually get the carriage returns. Okay, let's move on to string concatenation. This is where you'll take two strings and add them together. So let's create a couple of string variables. So now we have two strings and now let's add them together. You will note that we can actually use the plus operator to add strings together or concatenate them. This, really, this is really handy when you have to read from a file and concatenate the strings together in some weird way. Or sometimes you'll be parsing XML and you'll need to do something like this. There's another way to join strings together that can sometimes be handy because again, you'll be reading from like a comma separated file or a CSV file and you'll read in line by line or column by column and you'll end up with a list of words or strings and you want to join them into one string. Fortunately, the strings actually provide lots of methods, and the first one we're going to learn about is called the join method. Let's take a look. So I'm going to create a string, an empty string, and then do dot to enable the method. See, so it doesn't even tell us what, what is going on. So we have string dot join, and we need a, an iterable like a, like a list. So we have A and B inside of that. And now it'll join it together and you end up with the same thing. So basically what that does is it'll kind of loop over each item within the list or tuple or whatever you have in here and join them together using an empty space. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can actually take this and put a space in there and it'll change the way the string looks. And notice that here we have two spaces instead of one. So if you're actually taking a bunch of strings and you split them 
or you need to add commas or something, you could do that here by putting a comma here and then do and join and it would just join the strings together with commas separating them. You can do lots of fancy things like that. That brings us to learning about string methods. To find out what methods are available in this in a string, let's use Python's built-in dir method. We'll just call it on an empty string and we'll get a whole list of all the different string methods available to us. Let's just take a couple so you can see what they look like. We'll just say Mr. President dot capitalize and see what happens. You'll notice that it capitalized the first letter in the sentence. That was pretty handy. Let's try making it do something else. Let's change dot capitalize to dot upper, for example. Well, that made all of the all of the text in your uppercase. You can use these methods to do all kinds of different things. For example, you have is alpha, which will tell you if there are any alphanumeric characters in the string. You can use it to determine if the string has digits in it, or integers is probably a better way to describe it. You can use it to um, to do stripping, which is actually not as bad as it sounds. So let's say you have a string with uh, padding on the beginning and the end. And by padding, I mean lots of blank spaces. So this string has some blanks. Now, a lot of the time, you don't want those blanks to be in the strings. But occasionally, you'll end up having that when you read in a file from some someone that you don't know that well. For example, I've worked in a lot of places where you'll get a file from a client and you're supposed to parse the file, but it, it, it is um, delimited by spaces even, or you have to actually count the characters to find out where to break each part of the, the line apart. It's kind of complicated, but anyway, if you want to strip off the extra stuff, you can just call strip. And that'll strip off any blanks at the end of the string and any blanks at the beginning of the string but not any blanks inside of the string. There's also an L strip and an R strip, left, which basically means left and right strip respectively. If you use one of those instead of just the regular strip, it'll only strip from that particular end. So let's do an L strip to illustrate. So that stripped off only the left hand part portion of the string. I recommend checking out some of the other methods as there's actually a bunch of them in here that are really helpful. Now we can move on to string slicing. String slicing, as the name applies, allows you to pull out pieces of the string and basically parse the string for, for whatever is inside of it. So let's create a string. We'll just create something silly. And then we'll use the stripping characters. In this case, we're going to use uh, the square brace. That tells us that we're going to open up something. We'll start at the beginning, which is always zero in Python. And we'll go in four characters. This will actually go zero, one, two, and three, and not include the fourth. So you hit that, you'll see that you get T H E and the space. If you only wanted if you wanted, to, you can actually go backwards too. So let's say we want to go backwards and try that. You'll notice that in this case, we didn't have a starting character. We just had a back, the end. So we went backwards four characters and we moved moon, but not the space. You can actually do a lot of really complicated stuff and use the, the pluses and the minus says to jump into the middle of the the sentence and really get parse out pretty much anything that you ever need. Okay, the other topic I want to talk about is string substitution. String substitution allows you to actually insert other strings or integers or even floats and sometimes like a few other things into your string. The traditional method is to use a percent sign and s for inserting a string, percent sign and i to insert a integer, etc, etc, etc. It's actually kind of like C++ that way. Let's take a look. One of my favorite ways to do this is to actually create a string with my name. 
and insert it into something else. So we'll do like this. Hello, percent s. And then we'll have my name. And it'll actually print out hello Mike, which is really helpful. You can actually ask the user what they want, uh, what they should, what they should, what their name is basically. So name, you can use um, input. Let's try this out. What is your name? So this is actually going to ask us, what is my name? Let's use something different so you can see the difference in this. Um, I'll say my name is Bruce in this case. So now the name has the name Bruce in it. So if we write this code again, it should print out Bruce, which it does. Okay, yeah. now we should um, look at how to actually insert multiple things. It should be fairly obvious. You can actually just put in multiple percent S's. Now, if you don't actually add another item on the other side of the percent sign, then you'll end up with a syntax error like this. Well, type error. So that's not exactly what we wanted. And so let's try that again, but actually put in a second argument. When you have more, more than one, you have to wrap it in um, parentheses. So this time I'll add my name back in and it'll say, hello, Bruce, Mike, which is kind of a weird way, but you get the idea. So the other way to do substitution is to actually use curly braces. This is helpful in some other situations because you can actually uh, name them, for example, but we're going to start with the, with a more uh, obtuse case. So in this case, we have it numbered. Then you use the format method. And then you can put your names in here. So in this case, dot format just, just inserted the name twice because it used the zero th position one and then the first position one. Now you can get really, really funny with this and just, um, I believe you can do something like this. You just tell it, you're going to insert the name twice by only doing zero. And then you'll insert it however many times you want. Now, this is what makes this particular method a little bit easier to use than using percent %s repeatedly because percent %s actually requires you to input, import those particular number of arguments. So if there's two of these, you need two arguments to be passed to it. In this case, you can see you only needed one. The final way to use string substitution is to use named arguments. So let's do that real quick and edit this a little bit. We'll make this one say Bruce. And name two, for, let's, do, let's make this a little bit more generic. Name one and name two. So then you do name one, go to Bruce. Name two equals to Mike. And there you go. Really easy and simple way to put it in there and it's really obvious what's going on. This can, that when you do do the names though, this can make the the line a little too long and there is uh, a style guide that says you shouldn't go over 80 characters on a single line. So you have to be real careful if you end up with a lot of arguments and this line get, blows up in size. Other than that, I think we're good to go. Thanks for watching.